I'm Terrence James, and you're watching another episode of Neutral Reviews, where we do real reviews for real decisions. And today, we are looking at the 2021 GMC Canyon 4x2 diesel. And I have borrowed the keys for this vehicle from Chris, one of our first and most loyal subscribers who knows way more about vehicles than me. Welcome. Nice to see you, Chris. Good to see you. Okay, so as you know, this part, this point in the show, normally I get to uh, leverage my creative writing classes and do my <laughs> overview. Uh, so, you know, when I was growing up, uh, we always had an S10 and a Ranger, mm -hmm. uh, but they were tiny. They were like, uh, you know, basically a car with a box in the back, right? Yeah. Um, and then I remember in 2004, I was selling cars at the time. Uh, you had the Colorado and the Canyon, of course, mm -hmm. and it was more of a mid-sized truck. It was a lot bigger, yep. um, and that was what kind of brought my attention. Of course, the Dakota followed suit, and then in 2015, it got this, right? The second generation. This is a refresh yeah. that happened in 2021, but the proportions are starting to get really big and usable. So what I'd say to you, I guess, is why did you pick the mid-size over a full-size, and why a GM in this particular spec? Well, one of the uh, big reasons is, as you mentioned, the size. This is basically the size of a full size from about 20 years ago. It's about the same size as a Silverado or Sierra would have been at that point. Um, plus, the diesel engine was a big draw for us. We'll get into that more later, I'm sure. Um, and my wife is a GM technician, so it was just uh, convenient to be able to get the GM product, something she can work on easily. So, um, yeah, it's honestly a great truck so let's take a look at the facts feels and final thoughts of the 2021 gmc canyon 4x2 diesel let's take a look all right so it uses their 2.8 liter inline four turbo diesel uh, with direct injection which is capable of producing 181 horsepower and 369 pound feet of torque which is capable of rocketing this 4500 pound uh, diesel locomotive from zero to 60 in around nine seconds but i want to ask uh, chris here like you said part of the reason why you got the uh the this truck in the spec was because of the diesel so let's hear some more things about what you like about the diesel what were some factors in it the fuel economy things like that right so so yeah, the diesel was a big deciding factor for us in going with this truck specifically over some of the competition. Um, we looked at the Tacoma, but the Tacoma basically burns through fuel like a V8. And uh, we knew we wanted something that we could do. We do some camping in the summer and stuff. We wanted to have something that we could take on longer trips and not break the bank when it comes to fuel. Um, although of course last year price diesel shot through the roof and kind of offset that a bit but um, yeah and previous to this we had a gas four-cylinder canyon as well and it was it just always felt a bit underpowered and so this got us that power with that balance of fuel economy and uh, the fuel economy is just incredible from this engine. And you were mentioning before, because I didn't get to do a lot of research on this, that this is a Duramax name, but not necessarily the Duramax that we're thinking of in the full-size truck. It's a little bit different? Yeah, that's correct. So the Duramax in the full-size truck, it's uh, a GM design. It's made by, well, GM owns Isuzu, so they're the, they're the heavy diesel part of the company. So uh, basically with this engine, what they did, although Isuzu did make these engines at a factory in Thailand, they actually bought this design from a Fiat subsidiary. So technically the motor in this is actually a Fiat Chrysler product. Uh, it was used in the minivans and Jeeps and stuff in Europe for years. Um, so this engine has been around for about 25 years in those products. Let's keep coming back here because all that power's got to go through somewhere. And it goes through a six speed automatic transmission on this, which I think uh, we haven't had a chance to drive it yet, but uh, it works pretty good, does it? Uh, yeah, the six speed automatic, it, uh, it does shift really nicely, really smoothly. Um, it's very quick to downshift if you need that uh, power suddenly. If you get on the throttle, it'll downshift without any hesitation. Um, it's also known to be a much more reliable option compared to the 8-speed automatic you could get in the V6 version of these Well, trucks. you just beat me to it. I was going to ask <laughs> you why they went with the 6-speed, uh, and, and you gave the perfect answer there. And as we said, of course, this being the uh, a, a enthusiast spec, we have a two-wheel drive. Right. Uh, now, one of the things that I like with the uh, Canyon 
uh, any of these mid-size trucks really is the fact that uh, they still sit pretty high. Like you can't really yep. tell from the side because when I was selling trucks a long time ago, a two-wheel drive was a lot lower than a four-wheel right. drive. Uh, so now the aesthetics is still there. But, yep. you know, for the most part, and again, I'll ask you, is I don't really think you need four-wheel drive necessarily nowadays. I know a lot of times you'll get that back, that 3,000 or so on resale, but realistically, you, you got another 300 pounds you're pulling around. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to be more wear and tear, not as good on fuel and things like that. Like, I know when we had our trucks, a lot of times they were four by twos, and we would just put weight in the back, and as long as you had, you know, good yep. tires and LSD or whatever, you were fine, right? Yeah, we... Uh yeah, we've found, uh, since we've had this, we, we like to keep track because people will uh, harp on us for not going with the 4x4 option. So we like to keep track of situations where we think it would have been beneficial. And in the two years we've owned it, there's been five situations where we would have engaged the 4x4. Um, and that was just for brief moments, like you get stuck in some snow yeah. in the driveway or something, trying to get out, trying to get through that snow the city dumps at the end of the driveway. Um, things like that because uh, otherwise we in the winter we run a set of Michelin excise tires on it um, so really high quality winter tires and it just plows through anything um, anything that the winter weather throws at you we don't even usually have to put weight in the back it'll the Michelins will just the Michelins with the limited slip diff in the back will just pull it through whatever it needs to get through really well exactly that's exactly what I'm saying um, so I think that leads us to our first test uh, and we'll be right back okay and here's where we do our traffic light Grand Prix acceleration test and today I have uh, a passenger so we are gonna go uh, as fast as we can to that stoplight just to hammer on the brake so here we go left foot on the brake right foot on the gas and this is torquey so we don't want to light up the tires so here we go actually not bad some good pickup here we go and we're gonna hammer on those brakes hold on everybody oh I'm gonna put my hair on my like my mom does <laughs> make sure you're safe uh, not bad <laughs> fast okay so as you can see that actually wasn't too bad there's a lot of torque on these diesel engines so it has plenty of uh, pulling power to get you away from that stoplight and it is pretty smooth it's a nice accelerating vehicle but you have to steer and it steers and I don't know I wasn't actually able to find do you know if it is is it electronic EPS steering nowadays hydraulic a blend of both or what is this thing? Uh, yeah this one is a fully electric power steering rack okay. uh, rack and pinion power steering like most of them nowadays yep. right yeah um, and I guess we'll get to see how it feels when we get out there to see if it's numb or, or what it's like but it's got to steer these beautiful, these are 18 inch uh, aluminum wheels by the looks of them. Yep, that's correct. Uh, 18 inch black painted aluminum alloys. Uh, we've got, uh, these are actually the factory tires as well. Goodyear Wrangler 42 HTs, uh, 265 60 18s on this truck. Uh, you can get uh, lower trim levels of this. No, sorry, these are the base wheels actually by 2021. This was the base wheel on the base truck because this is the base truck. Um, you could get 17s if you got the 84, the off-roading version, and the Denali's came with 20s as well. 20s, wow. That'd be cool. I, I personally, I, I think I like this size wheel on this truck personally. Yeah, I, think. I, like the, I like the amount of sidewall. It gives you the uh, cushion to do things like yeah. uh, when we go camping, it can take some of those hits in the campgrounds if they're rutted roads or whatever. Yeah, so. absolutely. That's, uh, that's what I mean. Like the, it, it, They probably fill the wheel wells just as good as those 20s, but you've yep. got more of a practical uh, truck-type tire for sure. Now, you right. got to stop, right? And I don't see red brakes on here, but they're still okay. <laughs> and, uh, well, they're just silver. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Are those two-piston up front? I can't uh, tell. Yeah, we've got two-piston uh, calipers in the front, single piston in the rear. They look pretty meaty, though. They look pretty big. I don't um, know what size of discs those are, but they look pretty decent. Yeah, that's probably a question for my wife. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'm it'll be up on the screen by the time this video comes right. out. Right. I'm not sure how big they are exactly, but I do know these ones for 2021 are a bit bigger than uh, before 2021 because we used to have a set of 16-inch uh, winter tires on our old truck, and they would not fit on this truck. Yeah. Well, there um, you go, because like I said, they look pretty decent for sure. Um, and then... Uh, we'll put up on the screen too if we can find the stopping distance. I did find some, mainly it's about four wheel drive, but from 60 kilometers uh, to zero, it looked like it was half decent. I think it was around 125 feet or so on a four wheel drive. So, you know, if you backed off some of that weight, I'm sure this would be even a uh, shorter distance. So, how do you Probably. feel? 
Um, it stops. It stops, okay. <laughs> I don't have any concerns with it, whether it's unloaded like this, uh, if we've got a trailer on the back too, it, um, it's got a trailer brake controller, which I'm sure we'll see on the inside. Um, so it does, it handles those quite well, but um, yeah, stopping power is great on this truck. Yeah, well, that's perfect, especially when you are towing something. That is a that is a factor to keep to consider. Is you want to make sure you've got ample stopping power, right. and of course we got to use suspension. So we come back here and we'll talk suspension. I'm assuming that's got strut front. Um, uh, yep, yeah, it's got a strut front double wishbone up front as well. So oh wow! It's, it's got um, same sort of suspension you'd find in Porsches or. Other yeah. high-performance sports cars. Well, like I'm excited that. to take it for our handling test then, because that's yeah. a that's a nice setup. Now, what about in the back live axle problem? Uh, yep, back is a little bit more basic. Yeah. <laughs> You've got uh, your normal live axle, leaf sprung rear suspension in these. They haven't gone to the coil over springs like uh, Dodge, I think, has done that, and I think I heard Toyota is going that route too. So. Well, I mean, a lot of these truck on frame SUVs like the Wagoneer we did recently it's a, a basically a 1500 series mm -hmm. Ram pickup truck that they changed the suspension on and put four wheel independent suspension so you can right. see trucks could probably um, move towards that soon that these are becoming more and more car like even you and me were talking off camera that uh, we personally would prefer one of these over an SUV because you got the usability of the box so right. when we come back here when we're talking cargo um, is a good lead-in. We have the shorter box on here. I think it right. looks good, but did you say they did offer a six-foot box or no? Uh, yeah, so this one's the five-foot box. This comes standard on the uh, crew cab models. Uh, you could get a six-foot box as well, which would basically take the rear end out to here and make the truck uh, just that little bit longer, harder to park in the city and stuff like that. Um, plus, you couldn't get the four by four, or sorry, you couldn't get the two-wheel drive on the longer box with the crew cab uh, in order to get two-wheel drive you had to get the shorter box like interesting this. okay I know you did tell me that off camera but that just really dawned on me right now that's an interesting choice yeah uh, from their perspective I mean interesting so and again this being a truck one of the things that we like to do on the show is talk about the towing and this particular one can do 7700 pounds which is the equivalent to one of these active urban lifestyles hanging off the back. Uh, this is quite a, you know, this is quite a truck, all these mid-sized trucks. Of course, it's gonna be front heavy, being a front engine mm -hmm. and things like that. I think it's probably around a 60, 40 weight distribution. Uh, but yeah, and when we talked about everything, it really is amazing what these vehicles can do and how they handle, especially with that suspension setup. And we're looking at about 0.7 Gs on the skid pad on one of these, which leads me to my next test, which is our handling test, our highway and handling test. Okay, we're gonna do our highway and handling test. We got a nice stretch of open road here. So we'll put it in drive and we'll test out that double wishbone suspension you were talking about. Okay, here we go. We'll just get up to normal speeds. Just don't test it out too much with that live axle in the back. <laughs> yeah, my mom watches this, so no. <laughs> Uh, here we go. All right, so we're getting up at a good speed here, and this handles really, really well. I used to sell trucks, diesel trucks as well, and this is nothing like the Cummins diesels that I used to drive. I, I was mentioning off camera, Chris, that you can definitely feel that it is a diesel. It's front heavy for sure, but it's it it it's very planted. I I felt that the body was controlled there. Um, it's incredibly car-like. Part of the segment is noise, vibration, and harshness. And just how is it to drive on the highway? It, you know, because a lot of people would probably commute with this because of the yep. good fuel economy, right? And I, you know, I don't know how it's going to come across on camera, but in here, I, I don't hear the diesel at all. I was, I was saying to Chris, I think if you were a casual person, but you wouldn't even know that this is a diesel necessarily. Yeah, no, I don't think so. It's not like the old. We were talking off camera about the Cummins that you mentioned and the old Mercedes products and stuff that had those really rattly diesels that smoked and all yeah that you couldn't you couldn't enjoy yourself you know what yeah. I mean? it was truly a work truck at that point um, and even then uh, you, you know you'd have to drown it out with a lot of country music or something you couldn't uh, right uh, you know you could you couldn't think in there so I'd have to say pass all right checking out the back of the 2021 GMC Canyon 4x2 now, as we were saying, because these trucks sit up a little bit higher uh, for a four wheel or a two wheel drive, more like a conventional four wheel drive, it is a bit of a, a hop to get up here for someone as short as me, but it wasn't too bad at all. 
And one of the things that I like is with these trucks nowadays and a lot of these cars, they realize that people are using this for cargo and not just people. Right. And you can get stuff in and out, which is going to lead me to one of my tests in a second, which is can we fit our baby seat in the back of our canyon? Uh, but in the meantime, let me see if I can fit in here. So actually, I would imagine, Chris, this is pretty much, you know, like a good distance, the seat's yep. back, like we're not shoved up to the steering wheel type yep. thing. So. I'm, I'm 5'10", so that's my driving position there. Well, so there you go. So a 5'10 driver, I'm 5'7", and as you can see, I still got lots of room here, lots of room here. I mean, on these trucks, you're pretty much going to have the same type of length, I would think, within reason as a full-size truck, and height where you're really going to notice the difference is kind of the elbow room, I would think. Yeah. But realistically, yeah, you're probably... It'll be not, a tight squeeze for three people. I was just going to say, yeah. Realistically, I don't think you're probably going to ride with three adults back here very often. Um, so I think two would be fine, right? Oh, yeah. Looks like it. Uh, being the base model, not a lot going on back here. But we do have two USBs, which is nice to have, and a 12-volt back here. And that 12-volt, Chris, you say is very handy for certain things. Like, imagine you put a cooler in, or what are some of the other things you use it for? Uh, yeah, you could do that. Uh, we will also, when we go camping, we'll put our air mattress out with the tonneau closed. We'll put it out on the back of the truck, plug the uh, air pump into the 12-volt outlet in there, and run it through the sliding back window. Right. And uh, pump up the air mattress on the bed of the truck. So it's a nice, because it's a nice flat surface, nice convenient way of getting it close to the power source. Yeah, no, that's great. And, uh, you know, uh, you, you don't want to have to blow those things up or you pass out. Right. Um, <laughs> so let me do one of our most important tests. If you're an adult, you get stuck in the back. Can you put the window all the way down and be cool? So let's, tr let's give this a try here. Pretty close. We're gonna call this a pass fail because I can still put my arm out, so I'm still kind of <laughs> cool. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna do our baby seat test for the back seat of our canyon here. So here we go. Voila! We can put our baby in the back of our canyon. Not our baby, but a baby. <laughs> But one of the things that we wanted to make sure if you don't have a baby is can you use this truck for uh, cargo, especially for work stuff and things like that. So uh, Chris was showing me one of the nice things that this truck has that the full size doesn't is this top portion of the seat will fold flat um, when you put the headrest down, of course, because Chris is taller, so the seat in the front goes back. But you do have this split on both sides, which is really nice. And then like a lot of conventional full size trucks, um, this here, oh, already forgot, flips up and you do have more storage underneath there and more things that you can put in on the side. So this really is a usable truck. Pass. Okay, we're cuddling in here in our mid-size pickup truck. Um, and what we want to do is just quickly look at the front before we take this for a drive. And we usually start with the steering wheel. And I have to say I do like the steering wheel because it looks like a truck steering wheel. Uh, but it's nice and thin, uh, feels good in the hand. I do not know, is it uh, power? Or, oh, yeah, so it's not power, but it is tilt and telescope. Ooh, and I probably messed that up in exactly where you like it. You probably took forever <laughs> to figure that right spot out, but that's nice. Um, I prefer the manual adjustment myself. Um, you got some rubberized buttons here, which I guess would be good for um, keeping it clean if you're a work truck, right? Yep. This is more of the base edition, right? Uh, yeah, this is the this is essentially the base model of the canyon. Okay, and then um, it looks like it's pretty well equipped though for a base nowadays. It looks like you got power windows, locks, yep. um, that type of thing. It actually looks pretty nice in here, but the materials do look rugged as well, but not uh, cheap looking. I think it's a nice mix there. Um, I do like the manual gauge or the analog gauges. I'm a sucker for that. My car has it, but you also have a digital readout with some information there that I'm sure is. Got some good pertinent information in there for you. Yep. The uh, yeah, the center screen keeps track of. Well, of course, it shows you how great your fuel economy is, <laughs> which, we'll which test. is which is always uh, positive. Um, it also shows you things like the diesel exhaust fluid level, fuel filter level. Since this is uh, diesel, it's got to have those two things for uh, emissions and right. keeping the fuel clean, uh, engine uh, oil life. Um, all that sort of thing is uh, built into the center screen there. Yeah, and that's great like, uh, because, like I said, I, I, it's like old-fashioned watches. I like the analog from the aesthetic uh, perspective, but I do like 
like my car has as well, that digital readout does give you some interesting information, right? Yeah. Um, and that you don't have to go, uh, you know, searching through the infotainment. So when we talk about the infotainment, you say that um, it looks nice, but it's not necessarily GM's finest. Uh, yeah, that's that's correct. It has some glitchy issues. Um, I think we've had a couple of different warranty claims uh, related to it. Usually just programming, um, programming issues that come up with it. But it does have, um, as we can see on the screen right now, it's got the uh, Sirius XM receiver in it, um, AM, FM, Bluetooth audio, uh, USB audio. It even has an auxiliary input. I, yeah, I was going to ask you about that. So for like literally like headphones or something, you can put in there? Uh, yeah, like you can use the headphone jack to just like an older, yeah. older vehicle. They've, I think most of them have gone away from that. We don't have a CD player in this one. They have gone away from that. Um, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay are also built into this infotainment system, so that's really nice on uh, road trips. To yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Obviously, no wireless charging, but you do have no. wired in Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which is nice. What about built-in navigation? Uh, there is no built-in navigation in this one. Um, there was a package that was available for it. Uh, it would have got the Bose stereo as well, which we don't have because we didn't order it. Right. Um, wireless charging was available on the Denali, and it would put the uh, wireless charger right here in the center console if you got it. Um, my understanding, though, is it will not fit things like the um, big iPhones, the big Pixels, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, right fit there. Yeah, you know, I always wondered about that. I think you know these vehicles are so expensive, you know, but with their projects, the, you know, the, a lot of these things are started five, six, seven years before, and they can't necessarily project that giant cell phones are going to become a thing. Right. But, right. Yeah. So. And this is effectively a, at this point, over a decade old vehicle. Exactly. Even though this is a 2021 and that's when they did a mile refresh, right? Uh, but exactly, it's it's on that platform from 2015 essentially, right? Right. Of course, nowadays with everything going to electronics, uh, haptic touch buttons, it's nice to still have your your hard buttons for your, you know, your HVAC here. Yeah. But what's interesting is you got these toggle type buttons down here. And you've got some really interesting, actually, work truck related looking things. Can you explain some of the buttons here, like starting from the left to right, like exhaust brake, for instance? Uh, yeah, so one of the big things with the diesel engine option. Um, so this is, in your normal gas trucks, there is a trailering mode that would be uh, available here. But this couples trailering mode with a diesel exhaust brake. So it'll actually use the exhaust gases to slow the vehicle down when you're yeah. towing. And that's like when um, the, you hear those big transport trucks going down, especially down a hill or something, you hear the, the, the loud engine sound, that's them braking. Right, it's the same exactly. Idea here, right? yeah. yep. um, traction off and uh, four ways, those are pretty standard. Um, we do have cargo lights on this truck, so that turns on uh, lights on where the high center brake light is, like in a, in a normal truck. We also optioned bed lighting, so there's actually lights under the bed rails oh, that cool. will light yep. up the bed at night. Um, and then these two are part of a safety package. We've got uh, lane departure warning. There's no active safety. It's all passive uh, safety equipment. Um, but there's lane departure warning and uh, parking assist. We've also up here, this is the camera module for the, for the lane keep, and there's also a forward collision warning in there as well. Yeah, um, which is actually uh, one of our probably one of our bigger complaints about the truck because the forward collision warning will actually trigger um, in the rain or in the snow. Uh, it will it seems to lose sight of where the lines are, and it'll actually trigger a warning and start flashing a red light on the windscreen when uh, yeah yeah it thinks we're gonna have a head-on collision with someone on the highway. <laughs> right, yeah, it, you know, and a lot of the safety stuff is good, especially when you see so many distracted drivers out there. I, I don't like it as an enthusiast, but I like it to know when other people aren't paying attention that the, the car is doing more for them. But mm -hmm. it's not a perfect science yet, I don't think. You're right no, with all these no. sensors and stuff, depending on where you live and whether they're maintained. But uh, one of the main things we want to do, now that we've looked at a lot of the facts with this vehicle, is we want to take it for a drive because it's not very often that you get to take one of these baby Duramax 4x2 diesels out. So let's take it for a drive. Okay, here's our final segment where we do our price competition, rants, raves, and we're actually also going to do our final thoughts as well, that we have an actual owner of a vehicle. So those final thoughts probably mean more than coming from me, um, an old ex-car salesperson. So... Um, yeah, maybe we'll start off with the rants and raves. Uh, I'll say I've already done a lot of the raves in the sense of like I'm just can't believe how well this thing handles, how quiet it is, the acceleration, smooth, very gas-like. Um, don't have a lot of 
uh, rants about it um, other than things that you would already know coming into it, which would be your own fault if you're complaining about it, as in, like, there's not as much elbow room as a full-size truck. Um, I don't know if that's a real rant. Um, being the base model, you may not have as many amenities or some of the, 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 the fine touches, but that can also be uh, a good thing because if you are using your truck, like, for camping or things like that, you don't necessarily want stuff that you're going to scuff up and things like that. So... I, I, I don't have a lot of uh, rants and raves, but you're the owner. Like, what do you think? I, yeah, I mean, my wife and I talk about it all the time. We have, we have very little that we could possibly say that's, uh, that would be considered a rant about this truck. Um, it's had, like, it's had a few silly warranty claims, things that were related to manufacturing most likely so some of those kinks got worked out early on um, in the mostly in the first year in the second year we haven't really had a whole lot of uh, stuff like that so there's not really a whole lot uh, bad to say it's really just mostly raves with this truck um, just everything everything about it uh, to us it's just the absolute uh, perfect vehicle for us it does everything we need it handles great it is it's got the power it accelerates it's got the fuel economy um, I, I told him off camera before we uh, we took this down to Nashville last year we were able to we consistently average in the seven liter per hundred kilometer range which wow. I think is like 30 miles per gallon if you're if you understand the imperial measurements and that's um, incredible you know, to let you keep going. But when you think about it nowadays, to, to get a vehicle like this, that this that is this capable, if you need it to be, that you can still get around 30 miles per gallon, incredible. Right. And uh, even on our way between uh, Toledo and Cincinnati, we were, we were able to get that average down as low as uh, 5.4 liters per hundred, which uh, it's well into the 40s. I don't even know what that, well into the 40 mile per gallon range. I can't even remember what the number is, but it's just everything is just exact because we ordered it everything is exactly the way we wanted it the color the trim level the and, and, and what is the color name again because it's i really i'm a sucker for blue and this is one of my favorite blues uh dynamic blue metallic yeah no it's a re in person especially on a day like today with the reflections and things and that you cleaned it up it looks it looks really good yeah um now that being said when we you said that you picked this the way it is. This is the base model, and you kept it pretty base, and especially with the two-wheel drive and things like that. Um, um, I think these were what around forty-five thousand MSRP. The way you have it equipped, something like that at the time. Uh, yep, on the Monroney we've Canadian. got. Uh, yeah, forty-five thousand Canadian was the uh, price on the Monroney. Uh, we got it a bit less than that because we had some uh, employee pricing discounts and stuff like that. Um, but then uh, I know these, you could get a uh, two-wheel drive, a uh, two-wheel drive gas uh, extended cab model. Those would run you about 30, so they would, they would get down as low as about 30. And then if you get the fully loaded Denali X with the longer box diesel engine, you're probably looking at closer to 60. Wow. Um, yeah, it, you know, it's crazy when you think about it nowadays. So now with that being so, w w now, I, I would think that competition for this would be its its uh, sibling, obviously, the Colorado. Yep. Uh, but aside from that one, the Dakota was available, or the Tacoma. Yep. Um, now, the Tacoma is a good vehicle, but what would you consider competition for this? Uh, yeah, those ones. Uh, the Tacoma is probably the biggest competition because they're the biggest seller in the segment. In fact, it was the competition for us. We, we would have, I think I mentioned earlier on, we would have possibly gone with the Tacoma if it wasn't for a the pricing that we got on this and the fact that the Tacoma is a gas guzzler yeah. um, so that was a big deciding factor on both fronts and then uh, Nissan Frontier is another Nissan Frontier, big that's one. Right, yep. uh, the only other competitor that's not the Colorado that offered a diesel is the Jeep Gladiator so that would be another competitor I think technically right. Honda Ridgeline as well right but the Honda wouldn't have the diesel no, Honda yeah. has got a gas V6. Yeah, so really it's um, kind of unique Oh, and the Ford Ranger, sense. right? I forgot about the Ford Ranger. <laughs> yeah, the Ranger. Yeah, exactly. But I, I would have to say that that diesel really does kind of set this apart, really, because that Gladiator is yeah. a nice vehicle and a similar size, but 
I wouldn't think, uh, I haven't tested one yet, but I used to sell Jeeps, and if it's anything else like a longer wheelbase uh, uh, TJ or something, it wouldn't be the, anything that would handle like this or whatnot. No. But no. uh, that's very, very focused on off roading. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah, it's kind of a different angle. So that kind of leads me, I guess, to our, our, our final thoughts. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll leave for you and recommending to anyone that's looking for a uh, mid sized truck and a, and a diesel. Yeah, I mean, like, like I said, I don't, I don't think I can say uh, enough great things about it. So, if, if this is the sort of vehicle that you're after, they don't, unfortunately, they don't make them anymore. So yeah, you're saying the 2023, they've gotten rid of the diesel. Yeah, they have discontinued the diesel option, so you won't be able to order one brand new. But there are some available out on the uh, market, and if it's something that you're interested, I, I highly recommend uh, checking it out. Well, there you go. Uh, thanks for watching. And we'll see you again next time.